July 5th, 2016, Tuesday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, They made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princes, but without my approval. With their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves, to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria. My wrath is kindled against them. How long will they be unable to attain innocence in Israel? The work of an artisan, no God at all, destined for the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. The stock of grain that forms no ear can yield no flower. Even if it could, strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expiate sin, his altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as a stranger's. Though they offer sacrifice, immolate flesh and eat it, the Lord is not pleased with them. He shall still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Their makers shall be like them, everyone that trusts in them. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus, and when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. July 5th, Tuesday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. The Memorial of St. Elizabeth of Portugal and St. Anthony Mary Zacharia. The first reading comes from Hosea 8, 4-7 and 11-13. Remember, we began the book of Hosea yesterday, and we saw how Hosea preached against the infidelity of the people of Israel. In fact, Hosea speaks about the calf of Samaria. The king of the northern kingdom had a divided kingdom. Half of the villages were pagan, half were Jewish. And so he created two capitals. He created a shrine for Yahweh. He created temples for Baal. But even in the sanctuary which he created for Yahweh, he had two in the land, He put a golden calf. Now, in later days, that would be interpreted as a symbol for Baal, but most probably, it was simply considered to be a footstool for the place where Yahweh would appear to his people, much as the space between the wings of the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant was in Jerusalem. But the people were easily confused because one of the symbols for Baal was the bull, sign of fertility. And so they began to worship those calves instead of worshiping the true God of Israel. Furthermore, Hosea says they created kings but without his consent. Remember how when a prophet would speak in Israel, they would immediately try to overthrow the king? Well, what Hosea is saying that these were not real prophets. These were just simply politicians who were working 
to overthrow the king. They've been worshiping things made by craftsmen. They haven't worshiped the true God. They've simply worshiped statues built for him. And in fact, the people of Israel have many shrines. Under every green tree, upon every hilltop, there was a shrine. And there was double worship done at most of these shrines, to Yahweh and to Baal. So Hosea says, these are not signs of fidelity. These are not signs of devotion. They're signs of the people turning away from Yahweh. They're no longer faithful. The Gospel is from Matthew 9, 32-37. Jesus heals a man who is unable to speak because he's possessed by a demon. Now remember, in those days, any sort of illness, any sort of handicap was considered a sign of demonic possession. We probably wouldn't interpret it that way today, but that was the way that the people understood things. Some of the people say this is amazing, but others claim that it's through the power of Satan that he's doing this, which doesn't make sense. Jesus himself would say in another place, that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus feels sorry for the crowd because they're like sheep without a shepherd. Originally, the king was considered the shepherd of Israel, but it's been a long time since Israel had kings. The priests were supposed to be the shepherds, lead the people in the right way. But what Jesus is saying is that they haven't, and therefore they need workers for the harvest because the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. There are so few who have dedicated themselves to the ways of the Lord. And the people desperately need this message. They need to hear the word of God. As we heard a couple days ago in Amos, the people are suffering from a famine of the word of God. Whether it's a famine from the proclamation of the word, or even more, a famine from the living of the word. And the people desperately need that there be some who will share that message with them. And it's our responsibility. We're supposed to see that the hurt of this world and want to heal it. Heal it with our love, heal it with our patience, heal it with our living a good Christian life. And may God bless us.